So, we are uh, continuing with our discussion on uh, various types of uh, yarns, textured yarns and so we go further today on bulk continuous filament. So, what we have done till now uh, in last few lectures is that we have understood the air jet texturing, material and process parameters that influence the properties of air jet textured yarn and also importance of interlacement or entanglement, its need, mechanism, some jet design and how we can characterize the interlaced yarns. This is what we learn. Now what? So, we have a bulk yarn which is air jet, we have false twist textured yarn which is obviously stretch or modified stretch. This is something which is interesting, uh, which we consider as learning from each other, technologies which learn from each other. And that is how you had the BCF yarns and they are also commercially very successful product like the false twist texturing, air jet texturing, the BCF also are commercially successful products. So, this technology roughly employs principles of stuffer box and air jet texturing. In some sense, stuffer box produces yarns which are in the category of modified stretch yarns, air jet texturing produces yarns which are bulk yarns. So, how does it happen? We just recall what is happening in a stuffer box texturing process. You are overfeeding the yarn into a box. At the exit, there is a pressure plate. So, the yarns cannot move out. So, they bend in a manner which can be controlled by the speed as well as the pressure and also temperature of the yarn at which they are getting. So, there is a plug of bent yarn which is made within the box and the textured yarn is brought out from the other side. So, in a way you have a pliable yarn which is being hit which is hitting a wall and so bending and simple process and then of course, you cool down so that this texture remains. And we also remember that this technology is being used in staple yarn industry also, staple fiber where all the crimps that are given are by this process, it is a simple process before cutting. So, we expect that the structure of a stuffer box textured yarn would be crimped not necessarily very uniformly and some the frequency as well as the amplitude may not be uniform. But what happens whenever they bend, all the filaments bend together at whatever point they bend. So, you get a structure like this. So, it gives you some amount of bulk and so and some amount of stretch. The air jet textured yarn on the other hand is a process which gives bulk yarn. So, air jet textured yarn is a bulk yarn. What we are saying is that we will be looking at a process possibility of combining these processes, principles involved. So, air jet texturing uses jets 
their main purpose is separation of filaments and then loop formation and entanglement. So, one of the interesting part which people learnt is that in a air jet for various reasons it should be possible to separate the filaments. In the previous case you are not separating the filaments, you are bending the whole multifilament. Now, that you say is fine, one can do, but if at the same time you could also separate the filaments, then maybe you will get a different product. There is nothing called a loop formation, but crimp formation definitely is what we are looking. So, as far as the AZT is concerned, entanglement is part of the thing and you produce a bulk tear. PCF technology wants to create crimps and uses fluid jets and therefore, the fluid jet part learning has come from the air jet and crimp that means you hit the wall and bend that is come from the stuffer box and so this has become more effective and popular. What type of yarn this will be? One technology giving me bulk yarn, the other giving me a stretch yarn. So, this is likely to be in this category that is, it can stretch, but the difference is you have been able to separate the filaments, that is the main difference. So, using similar technology to get a product which is different. So, we expect a more resilient yarn then stuff a box. What it means is that the filaments after separation bend at different points. So, of course, you will have this bulk, you will have a stretch, so these are possible, but because they are not following each other, the overall bulk is larger and so contribution towards this bulk and then compression and recovery from compression are better. And so that is what we call as a resiliency. So these yarns, therefore, are very resilient, and therefore, are going to similar application like a carpet pile. Stuffer box also can go anywhere, but it was main was your staple fiber industry because large number of filaments can be just bent. So, this difference has actually made BCF yarns more popular. This we will learn that another interesting thing which obviously people realize is that this technology can allow spinning process to be combined also with texturing. So, this we can discuss a little later, but therefore, it became more commercially successful and more attractive. So, you did not have two machines, do not have to have two machines, you can have one machine which can work all the thing. So, the fluid that is used is hot air rather than the cold compressed air or room temperature compressed air. So, in the air jet, we are using compressed air, but we are not raising the temperature. Here, you are using hot air. You can use superheated steam as well. You know, the advantage of superheated steam is that when it condenses, it passes on the latent heat to the material. So, the rise of temperature can be fast. The disadvantage is obviously that there can be water droplets somewhere and you may have to design things in different ways. 
but the hot air means the temperatures are high. How high the temperatures? That would depend on the fiber itself. If it's a polypropylene fiber or it's a polyester fiber or a nylon. So based on that, you will use the temperature. And suppose you are using polyester and using 190 degrees air. So this can't be an open system where you are throwing air and it's coming out from one side and nobody's concerned. You can get burns without any problem. So you have to have, you're going to use fluid, which is we call it fluid because hot air could steam, anything could happen there. But what it also means is this whole environment has to be secured. You may not be interested in recovering the air so much, if you can, not an issue, because at least you have to reheat less and take it back and again compress and heat it. So one system is that you have to have a hot fluid and purpose is very simple. Because it is hot, therefore thermoplastic yarns are going to be affected. So one interesting thing also to be remembered is that this is also using thermoplastic yarns. So PP is very popular, polyester, nylon, anyone which responds to thermomechanical changes is a good candidate for this. Precautions of course will have to be taken. So different from the air jet that is using hot air, different from the air jet that it would not be suitable for viscose and non thermoplastic yarn. The functions that are expected from a fluid jet for the BCF is aspiration. That means it will suck the yarn immediately as it comes to the so it will suck and forward, right? so the aspiration. Pliability, they want to make the yarn softer. So if you make the yarn softer, the frequency of bends, amplitude can be controlled and they can be, can be done easily. If temperatures are low or not hot, then obviously the larger bends are going to be made. And of course, this is the most important expectation that individualization of the filaments. So it has to be used in a manner that the fil filaments are not only uh, sucked and thrown out, but they are individualized also. Then only then you will get that structure. So common sense also says that after hot air bending, it has become pliable, so it becomes easy bending. The bending bent yarn must be made stable. So there has to be a process of cooling the yarn so that we get the crimps stabilized. And so there has to be a cooling mechanism. Do we give overfeed? Of course. Whether it is the air jet or it is the stuffer box, we are giving overfeed. So overfeed will also decide as to what is going to be the number of loop, a uh, number of crimps and frequency of the crimps. Of course, when you say hot fluid, there is a pressure also involved. So this aspiration and separation, everything else, there is a pressure also involved. So you have a pressure governing systems also. So the question is, do we need entanglements? Air jet, one of the function is entanglement. 
So, using the same jet at a higher temperature. So, in air jet we do expect in BCF we do not want entanglement. So, we know how entanglement happened in the air jet texturing. So, you have to avoid that. So, how do we ensure that the filaments which have been separated being thrown out of the jet, they are pliable, but they do not entangle. Because our structure we want is that individual filaments bend in whichever way, we have no issue on that, but we still do not want any entanglement, then the compression, extension, all that will work better. So, how do you avoid that? We have seen air jet, we have seen interlacement, some entanglement takes place. Because if it gets entangled, then it will be a different product. Yeah? Yeah, but this is happening, this amplitude and frequency change is not a very controlled phenomena, is expected phenomena. The control with you is the pressure and the temperature, they are the control that you have. But it will be very difficult for you to say, well, this one goes only there, the other one bends here, the other one bends there, it is not there. So, wherever they strike, the bending will take. So, you are striking a wall. So, the technologies have been used principles, but they still want a different product. So, one important thing is that at the end of the jet, at the exit and in, during collection, there is not tension. Because if you remember, in the air jet texturing, at the end of the exit, there was a tension. And because of the tension, why was the tension? Because filaments were flying at different speeds. So, you had tension, because there was a tension, you had migration. And because there is migration, so you had entanglement. So, what you have to ensure is no tension or a low tension, no is the best. Of course, we are overfeeding, we are overfeeding in air jet also. So, this is what is to be done. So, for a machine, Fluid jet is important, so some designs will be there, which is but simple. That you have to have some ways in which there is a divergence allowed, so that filaments not only move forward, but separate. That part of the mechanism is understood. So, the other part which is important is collection after they have been aspirated, pliable, made pliable and then they are separated and they are being thrown when the bending is taking place, you have to collect in a manner which does not lead to tension. So, roughly a machine may look like this. So, you have your package, you draw the package, this is the jet, the hot fluid, the 
and this multifilament yarn is overfed. And so separate, but as it comes out, each filament just near the exit strikes a wall. This is a roller. Let us say it is moving in this direction. The yarn is being collected, I mean uh, fed, overfed. But there is no nip here. You see, in all overfeeding systems, you have a feed roll which is moving at a certain speed, which is a nip. Then there is a take up roll which is also nipped. So, between these two, you have a differential speed, and so you overfeed. So, this speed of this roll, which is a big roll, will be decided by how much overfeed you want to give. Because whatever speed is there, which is governed here, of course, there will be guides and everything else. You just keep feeding because this is sucking, it will pick up anything that you give. Right? So, you give 20 percent, it will take 20 percent. Only thing is during this whole process, it should get separated, heated enough and then strike this drum. Drum is rotating at a speed which obviously from the point of view is taking care of the overfeed. And this yarn in some way gets collected all over the surface Now, there can be a nip later. Now, by doing this, what have we done? The yarn has almost no tension at the exit of the jet. After that, it is over. And what the yarn, this drum is going to do? It will take this crimped yarn on the surface all along and cool it also. So, metal stuff cool. So, expected by the time it reaches this point, it is cooled. So, the crimps that are there are set. So, what has happened? Individualization of filaments, individual filaments are striking a wall, bending, and just being cooled slowly. After this, you can do whatever you want to do with this yarn. So, you get a BCF yarn here. What type of yarn would be feeding here in this jet? POY or FDY? Hmm? FDY? Why not POY? Important thing is the BCF is a final product. There is no more intermediate step after this. Then if you are taking a POY which is a very less oriented material, it will be bent of course, it will be set there and then in a very very uh, unoriented manner. So, later on also its extensions etcetera will not be controllable. So, you can use a POY if you want, but you will have to do pre-drawing. So, if you, but 
what is going to be fed in the jet it should be fully drawn if you want to change you can I mean if suppose you are saying well we are getting POY somebody is supplying which is possible now most of manufacturers are making POY they will have to use a pre drawing system to draw and then go through this process. So, this will be a final product. Speeds are more than 3500 meters per minute. Look at the speeds that we are talking about of the false Swiss section starting with 150 going up to 1200 meters per minute. Air jet texturing 600, 700, 800 thousand meters per minute. This process can give you speeds as high as this. It's a very fast process. Therefore, it comes cheap. Therefore, you can do production very high. And it's simple. As long as you understand the principles, so you, it's a very simple process. You're not interested in entanglement. So this yarn is going to be modified stretch yarn like a crimped yarn. So it's a, there are crimps, so they will open. If it is set very nicely, it will go back. So good use is being uh, seen in the carpet industry. All kinds of deniers can be used. So obviously, we are using half fluid, so morphological change is taking place. One can say, well, the time available here in the jet at this speed will be what? And jet cannot be very big. Let's say even if it is a 5 centimeter kind of a jet, maybe 10 centimeter of a jet, what's, what time you are spending? At this speed, see? So you are expecting things to happen and they happen, they happen because the actual change in morphology actually is a millisecond, microsecond process. So, the time which is taken is in heating, heating the material from room temperature to a particular temperature where these changes are going to be facilitated. But actual once you have reached the temperature where the thermodynamics takes over, it is a very quick process, automatically very quick process. And therefore, at high speeds this can be happening, otherwise one can always doubt as to how will you finish this process. It is true in false twist also that actually the time that is required even if it is 0.2 seconds, most of it is in heating and not rearrangement of molecular chains. So, the rearrangement of molecular chains takes place in a very, very short period. Thermodynamics is like this, just more than 0 of course. The cooling drum could be 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 meters in diameter, which if you look at any such machine, whether spinning or thing, looks like a bigger diameter, right? Because you have to spend some time. And during this whole process till it is set, no tensions. On one drum, because drum is big and you are rotating it whatever, so fixing so many drums for every position, that to large drum, so you say well why not have more than one jet being cooled on one drum. So it is fast process, so sometimes people use two tracks on a drum or three. So, yarn comes, one of them is guided onto one track, the other is another track, the other is another track. So, the arrangement have to be done of hitting and taking in such way, the gravity does not let the yarn fall, it can be done, is it? This is the drum, 
if it is moving in this direction. So, if the hit is here, so it cannot fall because it is being taken away and then from here you collect straight. So, it can say otherwise if, if other things are being seen then you can always make a perforated drum which can suck cool air and can cool and not let the yarn go out of. Why should I appreciate? Although it is a large drum and the speeds are, but speeds are high, you know. So, one should not have issues of under less tension, you see. If speeds are high and tension is high, winding is okay, right. It is not a winding drum, it is a drum which is cooling. So, it is obviously rotating at a much slower speed, but how much slower? Surface speed. just calculated because the overfeed that is all it is just adjustment you have. So, it still be rotating at fast speed, but because diameter is large so it can be so one around. Now, this is the intermingling part of it. So, you know the difference now it is not air jet detection. So, would you require intermingling? Yes, if you require in false twist you require a fully drawn yarn, you require a BCF also. So, interlacing jets will be fitted before binding and so you get what you want to get. So, multicolor is not a very different thing. You have a colored yarn, so colored yarn will come, no problem on that. So, one can have three different colored yarns three different tracks yellow, green, blue being collected three different packages which are yellow, green, blue no problem which is a mono color of a different color, but one can think of that you can mix also you can separate and mix and get a some mixed color. So, people sometimes are using this okay, okay, that will give you a multicolor effect in the yarn itself because during cooling or otherwise you collect them in a manner so they get theoretically you can feed also. So, mono color of course means whichever color is a mono or the other three color some of the companies may be offering option of three colors. As long as it is a package which is a colored package, it does not pose much challenge. The challenge comes at a later stage, where? So, before we go a little further, just an attention. You have a spinning process which we saw high speed spinning. High speed spinning means 3500, you get POY, 6000, you get fully drawn yarn so on and so forth. But there is a process which we call a spin draw process which spins at a relatively low speed. So, spinning speed is not high, but as it is being drawn along these gaudets, the speed keeps on increasing. The speed here could be more than 3500 meters per minute. That means, at the end of this whole process called spin draw, you would have a fully drawn yarn. This type of yarn is quite popular in tire cords as tire cords, spin draw yarn. Now, there is something which strikes us here that is spinning and drawing combined are running at speeds which are quite high. Our BCF machine capability is also of same type right. 
if there's the same time they can combine that is the yarn can be fed at a very fast speed and then again taken out at a fast speed so here at the end this is a fully drawn yarn this is the input so a spindra machine can become an input directly to the bcf i mean we can't say this that you can put a spin draw system or any other system and combine it with false twist texturing no way speeds are too different so you have a separate package and you do separately but here fortunately these process is very fast and the other process is very fast comparable speeds then you can combine anyway foy is it ki 6000 meters per minute that is by spinning speed this is too high people don't use that and can say well why can't you use that that's not done POY we don't want to use, right? Otherwise, it's a combined POY machine with this. POY has to be drawn, and therefore, a spindler process. So, for the first time, you have a process called spin draw texturing. You can combine the spinning process with the BCF. If you can. then you do it so most of the plants would actually be like this but separately also you can do it no problem but if you want to combine that would mean that you have enough production that you will be able to sell so you can work it out because the moment you have spinning attached with you it is a 24/7 operation non stop you don't stop a spinning process because the moment you stop everything will be choked so it is not stopped 24/7 keeps running and so your machine also must keep running 24/7 for texturing if you are combining or you have an option wherever i want to combine i combine otherwise i'll wind that's possible so we stop here and uh, with one information that you have a process which is running at a very high speed and therefore production is high and the cost is less cost of the product because the process cost is less and so good amount of thing is being produced you can use it for any purpose but carpet pile is one of the good applications for such type of yarns high heavy denier yarn could be utilized for this thank you